Okay. So uh, Devin and I are going to talk for five to 10 minutes on our research about marketing with a book and a speech. And then we're going to take Q and A's today. So thanks for coming. The big point is the book is in the words of our friends at Predictive ROI, the cornerstone. It's your cornerstone content. Uh, so the chutzpah advantage uh, is that content. Um, uh, Chris's book is the cornerstone content, but then what do you do with it? And three things I wanted to mention that the research shows best things to do. Number one, and this is about meeting what I call suspects. They're not prospects yet. They're suspects. You just suspect they're interested in you and your work and what you do. So how do we find suspects? Um, one is we put on our own TV show. We don't even call it a podcast anymore. Call it a TV show. Do it on video. Sounds better. The secret is it's about your book and your work, but you're getting guests that you interview. The guests that you interview on the show, when they share it with their community, that's how you get introduced to suspects. Um, well, uh, I've got somebody trying to get in here and they don't know how to get in. Um, Devin, could you get a hold of Matthew Grabel and tell him how to get in? So the TV show, the guests that you have, um, or the podcast uh, on steroids, however you want to do it, introduces you to new people. Next thing is go on a speaking tour for the book on podcasts. Um, I'm using a service now called Podmatch. Uh, Nancy Jutton recommended it. It's $23 a month. And they're, um, they're a matchmaker with you and podcasters. Um, oh, people ask, how do we analyze which one are the best ones and all this? I don't spend that energy or time. I just look, if they seem right, get on there because the podcast recording is the gift that keeps giving for you. And I get clients when I'm on podcasts. So I, I like to do it. I don't try to spend too much time overthinking it. I try to get on four a month. So that introduces you to all these people who don't know you, more suspects to bring in. Now, the third thing and that we're talking about, and you're seeing emails we talked about at the conference, is a LinkedIn newsletter. So I started that the first week of January on LinkedIn. I don't do any promotion other than putting out the newsletter every week and then cross-promoting it in a pod, which I'll explain. I've gone up from zero to 1,480 subscribers who get this every week. And they were connections on LinkedIn. So they weren't quite a total suspect stranger, but they weren't like what I would call a tier two addressable prospect. Oh, podmatch.com. Mason is that podcast service for 23 a month. So check them out. So when you're on these podcasts and now these people who don't know you get to uh, hear you, experience you. So the book is how they read about you, but they need to experience you. So that's why we say publishing a book, number one marketing strategy, speaking about the book, number one sales strategy to get people in, depending on who you want is who you target for the podcast that you go out and speak on. So right now I'm targeting ad agency, digital marketing agencies, PR agencies. I'm finding all the podcasts that they listen to. So that's where I wanna be, where uh, two or more are gathered. I wanna be there to quote my buddy, Mark LeBlanc. So when they're gathered in the name of marketing, I wanna be there. I, I write about marketing for Forbes.com. I've written 17 marketing books. I teach marketing. I'm a marketing agency for marketing agencies and consultants and coaches and high-end service businesses. If, if what you charge is over $1,000, 
So the people in the financial world, I have a lot of financial planners ask me to teach them how to market with a book and a speech and get it out there. It all works together. What I'm seeing people are not doing is understanding that publishing the book is the starting line, not the finish line. And it's a marathon race we're getting into. So we constantly need to do it. I was interviewed the other day about the uh, pattern that we're in. Like, you know, what do you do? I said, well, I write five columns a month for Forbes. I do five newsletters a month. I do five TV shows a month. I do four podcast guest spots a month. These are all things I can control. Uh, I offer people to have strategy calls with me, but I don't control that. I just author it. I just offer, O-F-F-E-R. I just offer that and the universe delivers who they want to deliver. Or uh, when I'm back there in Virginia with Rick, it's then the Lord helps those who help themselves. So the more I'm out there with that offer, the, the luckier I get, the more generous we are. I, I love it when people like our generosity. Well, it's, it's enlightened self-interest. We know that the more generous we are in helping people with content, the luckier we get with people showing up, wanting to have meaningful conversations with us. Um, uh, I, I'm a baseball fan, so I call those at-bats. And at-bat is not that preliminary conversation about, oh, tell me something about the company or the firm. It's when they want to have a conversation when they want to ask those questions about how much does it cost? How long does it take? Uh, what are the options? These are meaningful conversations that you have to enroll clients. And when I have a meaningful conversation in the enrollment process, I call that an at-bat. And when they become a client, which means they sign something and they give us money, <laughs> that's, a, that's a hit. So those are my baseball at-bats and those are my hits and that's where my batting average. So we're working on that, but how do we get the at-bats? We have to be reaching out to this group of people who are the suspects. Sus we suspect they, they will be prospects and we have to reach out to the prospects too. So with that, I just wanted to open it to any question for Devin or I. Devin is our expert on social media promotion, getting the books uh, listed on Amazon and, and other features like that. I'm, I'm the expert for building marketing into a book so that you can capitalize it later. I wrote the book, Marketing with a Book. Not so marketing Henry. With a book, marketing with a Book. So any questions? Yeah. So this is Rick. I have a question. Um, do most, do people expect to be paid who are being either interviewed or are interviewing? So being paid on a TV show or a podcast? Right. No, they are not expected to be paid to be there. You are shining a spotlight on their work. You are okay. honoring them. I got that Good. phrase when I did a magazine article and a, featured her in a TV show, Gretchen Rubin the best-selling author of The Happiness Project. And I said, thank you so much for giving me of your time. And I put her in a magazine with an 80,000 circulation and a TV show with a reach of a million. And she says, oh no, thank you for shining a spotlight on my work. So that's what I Got it. just all to say when people offer us these things. First, you pause three so, seconds for dignity. Then you say, thank so, you for asking. And then you say, thank you for shining a spotlight on my work. So Henry, one other question, then I'll shut up. You mentioned last week in San Diego that, <clears throat> did, do you feel like you're overcommitted to having to produce too much versus trying to do one podcast or video TV per week? Is that is that a pretty good cadence? Uh, one a week is a good cadence, but here's the secret. Producer Suzanne, I hired a producer two years ago. We didn't, I said, you don't even know what this is all going to be yet. You know, we're just going to get you working in here. But um, it, it took a full year for us to get to speed. And then I invite people or I send an email that says, Suzanne, would you please invite Rick Scruggs and get him booked on the show? And then she handles some logistics. We're streamlining things. So um, we used to spend too many of her hours with back and forth with people and what exactly will Henry ask and what will do and then what will happen and you know so now it's basically Henry's going to ask these three questions be ready to answer these three questions 
And basically Bingo. they are who, what, and how. Got it. If I was going to ask Thank five you. questions, it would be who, what, when, where, why, and how. I think that's six. Um, so that's the basic journalist creed. Now, Rick, can I give you some pushback? Can I step on your toes? Absolutely. I fully expect that. It's a learning moment. Um, hi, Henry. I have a question. This is Rick Scruggs. I'm the author of the upcoming book. What's the title of your upcoming book? What's Wrong With My Thinking? What's Wrong With My Thinking? And my question is, and then I want to encourage everybody to put your name, your email contact, and even if it's just a few words, you know, not a paragraph, but if it's a sentence on who you are, because we want to amplify each other's work, the more we know about it. When Rick's book comes out, I'm going to ask all of you to buy it for 99 cents and more important, leave a verified purchase review on amazon.com. And if we do that for each, if we just did that for each other in the family, not even the whole 150, if one third of us, 50 did that for each other, uh, think of the results we could have. Okay, looking for another question. Uh, Dr. Steve. Thanks, Henry. So I'm Steve Swively, author of Ignite Your Leadership. And my question is, relates to that, the 99 cent um, campaign that you, that you do. I understand um, that that's one way to get a lot of people to um, provide um, a, a review of the book and that there's some algorithm that Amazon uses to then say how popular that book is or you know how how um, well diverse it is. My question is, um, what are the specifics about how we do that as a as a, as a family? So, for example, you sent out a list the other day. It was about I don't know thirty books on it that would that were the ninety nine cents. Do we have a certain time frame with with which to respond and get it into that algorithm, or is it open? I would like the genius known as Devin to respond to this question, please. Thanks, Steve. Typically, well, I'll start with last week was kind of a special thing because we put a lot of the books on sale for one week as tied into the conference. Typically, we have one book at a t launching at a time on sale and the sale lasts a week. And so we'll send out notifications to the whole, um, the family email list. So you typically have a week to buy the 99 cent Kindle. Book. Okay. That's so, the, that is the time frame that we are trying to get as many eyes on it to get that boost. Got it. Okay. So the week is kind of the time frame from when it launches. There's seven days to go purchase the book and give some kind of review. Right. Got it. You know, one other thing, I'll just share this with the group. I discovered because one, one of the commitments I made when I was at the conference, by the way, Henry, great conference in San Diego, loved it. Um, Devin, Suzanne, you guys did a great job of putting that on. Um, one of the things I discovered as I committed to do that is um, you have to have an account with, um, with, Amazon, and you have to have spent $50 in the last year, um, which presented a bit of a problem for me because my wife has the Amazon Prime, and so we do everything through Amazon Prime. My account's been inactive for like three years now, so um, I got to I got to I got to activate it again. So if you have if you want to participate in the in the 99 cent campaign, which I think we all should be doing then uh, make sure your account is an active account and you've spent some money with Amazon in the last, I think it's a year that you have to spend the $50. Yeah, yeah, that was a, a response from them from all the people buying buying reviews and creating fake accounts. So yeah, it is, it's an extra hurdle, unfortunately, but it, yeah. in okay. the end, it should help us get real reviews so oh absolutely yeah I, I think i think it's a no-brainer for all of us to do that for for each other so well, I'm, I'm committed to it steve thanks for the kind words let's see a show of hands i'm gonna have this is i'll give you the two choices um the the testimonial 
is to help the other indie book author or the testimonial is to help you? How many say it's to test help the other author? How many say it's to help you? <laughs> the answer, well, the answer is both, but the answer it's I'm for is it's for you. Because when you review books and you've, you've bought the $50, you qualify, you're not giving a, um, you know, not a one or two word review, you're giving a thoughtful couple of sentences, then <laughs> you get to say, as the author of The Chutzpah Advantage, I've often found that, uh, pick on anybody here, oh, uh, the brain science that uh, Steve Swavely talks about is very powerful in human interactions, blah, blah, blah. You just told everybody about you and your book. It's the cheapest publicity you'll ever have. And who's reading these things? Book buyers, people who buy books. So I also encourage you to give testimonials to other books and buy other people's books, especially in your field. Now, Mason, I'm I'm just using you as an example. I might not be using Mason correctly, but um, Mason is very great at uh, training like uh, salespeople, business development people, uh, and their their VP wants them to be more bold and more out there and all that. So they'll bring him in, and you know, uh, and in in Oklahoma they call chutzpah grit. So so they understand each other pretty quick. So how do you have more grit? Okay. Um, there are other books similar. Mason should be giving positive reviews to other authors and mention that, oh, I share this same thought in my book, The Hutzpah Advantage. You might think the Amazon algorithm is going to punish you. Quite the opposite. <laughs> They're going to reward you because... Amazon knows when somebody buys a book on the subject, like when I had to write, when I had to, that's wrong language, when I was allowed to write a book about Warren Buffett by the First Amendment, when, uh, when I got the assignment from McGraw-Hill and I had 90 days to write this book, on uh, day one, I bought 11 books on Amazon about Warren Buffett. You know that thing that comes up? People who bought this book also bought these books. Amazon knows that in the nonfiction market, people buy multiple copies of books. Um, that's why also you want to buy your book during the 99 cent campaign and maybe a couple of others that are related because it'll trigger the algorithm when their books to come up. So people who bought this book also bought the chutzpah advantage. You know? So that's some of uh, the behind the scenes. This is not how you win the war. These are just little stratagems that help. When people go to Google you, I had a strange sense people were Googling me. When they go to Google you, Chris Hodges, what's going to come up? Well, one of the things that's going to come up is that you're Amazon, that you're the author of this book. Noble Automation Now. So we're going to go look at that book. And then we're going to see the book and we're going to see next to it, how many reviews does it have? Ooh, this is a de facto measure. Um, Rick, I, I meant to ask you this question uh, on the side is there's a term in finance when you can't measure the actual thing, but before you invest, you, you find some other number that is a good clue on what that is. If that word comes to you, share it with me sometime. Um, okay. I'm having a, a block right now, but this is a de facto clue of how important you are is how many how many reviews you have. Also, make sure they're not all five star. That looks like the fix is in. I didn't have to do that with my Warren Buffett book. There were some people who gave me five stars, but a lot of some people gave me one star. They 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 not only hated the book, they hated me and my family. And and they they wanted to make sure that uh what did they one said uh oh I guess Forbes gives any Tom, Dick, or Henry a column these days. So I'm pretty sure he was calling me a dick. Uh, you know, that's how he felt about it. That's okay. It tells people that this is real. Okay. Another question. Um, Dr. Pam. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Henry. I'm Dr. Pam, and I'm the author of the upcoming book, Heroic Caregiver. Um, 
I have a question about this Amazon um, uh, campaigning. I have now been I have now been asked to participate in at least two others, and people have designated a day when all of you know a certain group of people are buying the book and they're driving up the market on this particular day um, and getting, you know, getting, trying to become number one on that particular day. I suppose, I don't know what it generates. How is that different than the week long um, campaign? That's number one. And number two, in my instance, as part of my marketing, I was asked to contribute a chapter to two other books. Now, these books are not at the level of indie. <laughs> That's my analysis already. But um, they are, uh, you know, groups of people who've gotten together to write on a particular topic. And, you know, I was asked to contribute. So in doing the campaign for that, that book, my plan is to have buy the 50, whatever it is, whatever I decide, 99 cents, and then send it to my friends and tell them they must hit the link and, you know, so that those books will be supported. But when it comes to my book, I want them to go to Amazon, buy the book, hit the, you understand what I'm saying? Because we can't have three different, campaigns for Pam in a short period of time. So two of the campaigns are going to be for my chapter and I will give them the, 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 you know, this extra thing, preparing them for the Amazon situation. Yeah, I'm going to let Devin handle this, but <laughs> I'm going to start with say, saying a priority. Your priority is not those books that you did one chapter in. Absolutely. That is, they need to finish second and third. Your first priority needs to be your book. Yes. yes. And Devin, do you want to take the issue about one day versus a week? Or we've even gone longer. Yeah. So the Amazon algorithm that just figures out sales rankings and bestsellers is a bit of a mystery because they like it that way. Um, but one thing that they have said factors into their formula is projected sales. So they want to know that this is a book, like it's really selling, it's going to continue to sell. There's real interest here versus these, like you put all the effort in Marathon. one hour, you have activity for one hour, one day, and then it goes away. So part of our kind of strategy with doing a week is having you, you know, post and talk about the book in some form every day, kind of keep the buzz going. Of course, you'll have spikes. So, you know, the first day you announce it, when the email blast goes out and that kind of thing, that'll be a, a spike. But then the hope is that you'll continue to get sales throughout the week because it's better for you to have 10 sales a day for 10 days in a row mm -hmm. than a hundred on one day and zero for nine following days. So we're trying to not only get you to bestseller, but kind of keep you there for at least a few days. You know, we want it to be, you know, not just a flash in the pan situation, but really get the buzz going on it. So that's kind of our strategy. Um, that's also oh, on the seven day kind of plan. There's kind of like the first, the first day is the like, you know, shout it from the rooftop. So you're going to hit your list all your social media, our social media, our list. But then later in the week, we recommend doing a second email blast, you know, kind of a last chance, you know, one or two days left on the sale. Because again, you're just, you're trying to hit those, those peaks and um, really get as much buzz out of it as possible. So uh, that's why we kind of go with a week approach instead of just a one day. Thank you. Okay. Let me pile okay. on to this. A uh, show of hands, how many people have a regular blog, a blog or a newsletter that they do regularly? Okay. So I'm not going to scold you, but I'm going to say all hands should have gone up. 
Next, how many have a podcast? In development. Or, a, or something like this, a regular small-scale seminar, Q&A. Okay, good job, Jamie. Uh, Eric's hand should go up. Okay, now with that, when we send the notice out about new book, so uh, Jean Wright, uh, her new book will be out soon. Jean Wright's new book, so Selling with Confidence, you know, Thin Mints, Martinis, all this stuff. We'll send you the news release. You can turn it into a blog. Pretty easy. It, and you've met her, you know, and you talked and you can mention in there, I interviewed her and met her and uh, interesting story. And then tie it to you. It's easy content for you. If you had the podcast, you could schedule her. So these new people, you know, we're doing their it's coming out. This special event where Devin said we put a whole bunch of books. We're also looking at how to go for the greatest hits here, how to get Chris Hodges some more love for his book, how to get Mason more love for his book. Um, so the 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 other authors, and we'll work all that in for the amplification, the cross amplification that's going on. Um, you uh, you need to have an ongoing um, flow of information. Chris Hodges, hands up. Chris, you're on the air. Um, Henry, this is Chris Hodges, author of Noble Automation Now, both in two dimensions and three dimensions. <laughs> nice. <laughs> My book is on helping humans be heroes in the age of automation. My question, is, or two, two points. One is very tactical for Devin. Um, and then there's a question about speaking stuff. So Devin, the very tactical question, and that, I gave you a warning, right? So now you know, I'm gonna ask you a question. It is I'm I'm doing this uh, the the showcase events right, and I'm going out to the if in, in case anyone hasn't done that, it's one of Henry's and Mark's strongest recommendations to do these showcase events. So I'm doing showcase events in four cities, and I've identified on LinkedIn the people who follow have the job description that I'm looking for. In this case, CFOs, chief marketing officers, etc. Um, and I'm looking at the template you send me or the example. And I have one very specific question. When I do the connection request to people I don't know, so let's say there are 50 CFOs in Fort Lauderdale or Boca Raton or whatever, and I want to ask to connect to them, how short do you make it? That's question one. And question two is, do you tell them what the event is about? So right now I have it written as, Dear Devin, I, you know, you're a CFO and so and so and somehow we're connected. Maybe, maybe we're not. But anyway, somehow we're connected. Um, would you be interested in attending an event that I'm going to host in your area? That's kind of right off your template. But I feel like if I got that, I would say an event about what? So what's your advice on that? Yeah, so you are limited on characters in that box first, first off. So you do have to be kind of strategic with, with the wording. And it's a little bit enough for them to, to be intrigued enough to accept the connection so that you can send them the full invite with the, you know, the more the specific details. details. Right. Um, so a few ways to do that. So one, adding, adding a note um, seems to have a higher acceptance rate than just sending nothing, you know, no message right. at all. Right. Um, if you can include some reason that you're connecting, you know, some, yeah, something you have in common or, you know, I enjoyed your post about this or your article about this, something along that lines. And then um, it's not really usually enough space to say exactly the event. So what we do is more the who the event is for. So they know it's, you know, okay. so ours is, you know, would you be open to an invitation to an event I'm hosting for consultants in blank. Right. You know, and I saw that online. your your example talk was very helpful, but I, I just wondered, do I say just for consultants in your case, for CFOs, or do I say, well, actually the character limit is probably going to kick me out of this anyway, right? <laughs> I'm going to have to, yeah. Yeah, okay, it's was... only a, yeah, I mean, I think you can get like uh, two short sentences in is kind of the spacing. Um, okay. So, I you know, as targeted to that person. So yeah. obviously, you know, cause also as long, if it looks like a real interaction with a person, you're going to have a higher success. So you know, if yeah. it, you know, yeah. Let me jump in with what 
I've been testing and is working well right. in that first one is um, so I'm, I'm approaching ad digital PR agency owners. And my first, my says, when I was an agency owner, I used to make big plans and watch them go horribly wrong. And then I put, now I write about it in, in, in Forbes.com. If you get a moment uh, to take a look at my profile, that'd be great. That's my first one. I get a very high acceptance rate because it's obviously, it's not the spam bot coming after them. Uh, um, Henry, you you have no idea you, what, you just opened a box <laughs> and I hadn't thought about it. I was a controller, financial controller for a brief period of time. There's no reason I can't say that. Oh my God, this was worth the call. Just this call. Well, I was a financial <laughs> controller, you know. I, exactly. Okay. I watched everything go horribly wrong, which is different because everybody on LinkedIn is, let me tell you how great I am. And you should be, I should be your life coach or I should be, you know, something like the first thing. That's when so can true. we chat? It was like, yeah. What? yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Question two. Question two. I, I was at a, a meeting, um, meetings and travel event in Colorado, Thursday, Friday, about a thousand people there. And I'm a speaker and it's not for speakers. It's for hotels and it's for meeting planners, right? Meeting planners go to hotels. They try to find the right venue. But I thought I'd hang out and I'd meet some meeting planners. I ran into um, Ginger, who you know, because I met her through your event. Yes. And we both said to each other, have you ever been to an event where they do like, and I'm asking you if you've ever seen this, because if it's if it's been done, I want to copy someone else's template. If not, I'm going to do it myself. Right. Okay. Where you have speakers talk for seven minutes i'm not talking toastmasters that's a whole separate organization but they talk for seven minutes on a stage I got it. right and then the the people can choose to come to that event and listen to six speakers in a row or something yeah um executive next practices institute does them for hr people and each ahr person only gets up to five minutes to talk and then there's like the speed dating that happens after it but uh so you, know, you can just seem to you need in less than five minutes from somebody. Oh, no, like totally. That's a connection. It's like doing a live sizzle reel. So I, I'm thinking, and Ginger and I were all excited about it because she's a speaker as well, right? I'm sure half the people on this call want to speak. Anyway, okay. So I'll follow up with you later, but I think I want to set up an event where I meet, invite the meeting planner people, like meeting planner international people or whoever, um, come to the event and then they know who's going to speak so they can check out not yeah. attend the second half an hour because that person's going to talk about something they don't care about but it's only like six seven minutes long right the, so you've seen that model work. showcase events yeah and, some, that's what and i was thinking. most showcase events is the speakers want to talk for 15 20 minutes because they think more is better wrong and yeah. more is worse you know at, at the at the forum we make everybody do two to four minutes right and i know they think oh gosh i you know hey if you can't get them in two minutes why do you need an extra two minutes? Right. Okay. So I'm, um, I'm going to do it. I'll follow maybe, up. Do you with have you. a question? Yeah. What so comment? I was a man. I was a managing director for um, a women's business or networking organization for a few years, and and they're international. And there's a conference we have, and all the managing directors, right, from every city, everybody's at an event, and they. One night they decided we have a big stage. We're going to allow a bunch of people to pay us and we'll record a sizzle reel for them, right? So they had 20 people up on stage, five minutes each. And what happened was all the directors of every chapter found out this was happening. And because they have to book speakers on a monthly basis, they said, uh, we want to sit in the room and hear all this while they're getting their reels recorded. And it was phenomenal. These people had a live stage, right? Or a live audience for their recordings now. But now they repeat that because it was such a big deal. All of these chapter leaders sat there and got a list of who they want to come speak at their monthly events. So it goes over very well. Yeah. We're, we're playing with doing that uh, very idea for indie authors at a big uh, meeting planning event. So Jamie, I might follow up with you. Yeah, me too, Jamie. Instead of a booth, have something where everybody's going to do two to four minutes, uh, authors, and we're giving away books and come to that. Um, and we, we've done things at AASE, American Association of Society, yeah. Association Executives, ASAE, -A -A. anyway, anywho, I can't spell it, but I've been there. Um, and 
We'd like to do that again. I'm going to test that in the following way, if anyone is interested or in the space. MPI, so Meeting Planner International, Colorado, and whoever can be here to do it. And I'll, I've will i talked to enough MPI people at that show to just say, how long would you sit there? Anyway, that that's I'm going to try that. And of course, as long as I get to speak for six minutes, I'll be happy. <laughs> It'll work. Right? Um, All right, thank Mason, you guys. That was very Vivian, helpful. and then Jean. Mason, Vivian, Jean. Mason. Uh, first, thank you, Henry. Uh, Mason Harris, the, the author of The Chutzpah Advantage, just happened to have a book here, published, by the way, by Indie Books International. I uh, thank you for all your help in getting this out. Um, Let's see, in regard, uh, first of all, to the uh, podcasting, there's one other benefit that you didn't mention that I think is important for all of us. I know that I speak better when I've spoken more frequently. And the podcast gave me an opportunity, give me an opportunity to, to speak regularly, to anticipate questions, uh, to speak more fluently, frankly, even though it's my topic. You sometimes forget some of the stories in your books or you don't bring the right ones out. The podcasts have been great. That's why this podcast podcast uh, podmatch.com is going to be so important to me. So that's that's point number one. I guess uh, point number two in regard to uh, last week's event, God, and, and supporting fellow authors. Let's see. Teresa Ashby picked up that book. Suzanne Rowan got that book. Deliver Unforgettable Presentations. This just came in the mail. Dr. Carrie Johansson. Um, let's see. Dr. Pam, is this one of yours? Yes. Okay. So I got that too. I also have had calls as a follow-up since that meeting. I have another call tomorrow scheduled with Jamie. So uh, it, it was an, a, truly a, a tremendous event. Congratulations to you, Devin, Suzanne. Uh, it was tru truthfully much better than I expected. Uh, and I'm a difficult guy to please. I'm sorry I am. But uh, that is the case. It worked out well. I thank you. So it wasn't so much a question as much as a podmatch.com looks really interesting. It's working for you. I'm going to try it. I'm Absolutely. also doing that the uh, pod piece for LinkedIn, that pod with you, as you know. I've yes. uh, reserved a spot in that. Oh, I forgot. I also picked up this. Yes, <laughs> David's book. Oh, nice. And David. I don't even know what I've what else I have on the back from other indie authors. So this... This networking, the supporting each other. If I don't have your book, I definitely need to get it. And the idea of uh, getting more reviews out there on Amazon, most of them are coming through my uh, daughter's account because she got the student uh, prime account. I'm sorry, that's the case. And oh, and by the way, Henry, you probably mentioned my name four or five times in this call. I think I'm up about 36,000 spaces in my Amazon ranking just as we started. So thank you. <laughs> yes, get to know me. That's all I can say. Get to know me. So Thanks, Jason. Vivian? I wanted to go back to blogs and whatnot. Um, there are so many, you know, one thing that's prevented me from doing a blog is I don't have a very extensive email list. Um, or and and I do video. I do video. Uh, I blog. Actually, I do a, a video on LinkedIn once a week. Uh, but I I do three uh, posts a week on LinkedIn. One of them is a video. I do videos on YouTube. I have I I just uh, got a column in a in a newspaper in my. Uh, not my town, but a, a boarding town. A, a, a Any town would do. Bravo. Yeah. And there's about 3,000 to the readership. But I guess what I'm asking is, if I was to blog or if I was going to do a newsletter, should I be doing the newsletter on LinkedIn? Is that the best? And, and forget about the mailing list thing? Um, we all have different opinions. And if you want to give Vivian your opinion, uh, you can privately chat her. I'll give you mine. LinkedIn newsletter. LinkedIn is the world's greatest B2B database, and they give it to you for practically free. Um, the people who are doing an article a week, I either say add a, add a newsletter uh, or switch to newsletter because the newsletter, and Devin would know more about the algorithms and all that, but it gets pushed out uh, better. And people don't subscribe to your articles. They can subscribe to the newsletter and then they'll get reminded every time you get a new one in there. Um, 
And then this new thing we're forming with the pod where like 20 of us are going to do a newsletter at the same time every week and comment on each other's newsletters. And then that opens it up to everybody who follows us. So uh, just do a multiplier of how many people, uh, you know, I I have 15,000 people on LinkedIn. I've got, um, and I, I this is nothing to do with my brilliance. It's Devin's of hard work over eight years and leading the effort to, to keep that climbing, uh, but it's out there. And the subscribers got it just, it popped up, they subscribed and then they'll see your work. So that's what I meant by the amplification. Now, the only caveat is, and this is from my uh, buddy, Steve Westner at Predictive ROI, that even your LinkedIn newsletter, that's called rented land. My Forbes column is rented land. Tomorrow, Forbes could change a policy and all my my five a month columns for years go away. LinkedIn could change something and all the newsletters go away. Tied to your website, you know, and it might just be articles where you blog and you build your authority position over time. Uh, that is land you own and can, can't be taken away from you as long as you keep making your you know, your hosting payments. Um, so that's also to consider. So I, I like to have people have a mix of these things. Uh, there was another, was it Matthew's hand was up or who was the other person? Oh, Jean, I'm sorry, Jean. I'm Jean Wright, uh, author of the upcoming book, Selling Your Confidence, which I'm reading right now. Got it in the mail as I arrived home on Tuesday, getting back to Devin later today with uh, my final approval. I'm so excited. Um I'm in the Biz Inc. section of the Frederick Magazine for the month of March. Very excited about that. I'm also going to be in the April issue of the Competing Magazine in town. Um, I wanted to ask that the sizzle reels that we did, how, what, the awesomeness of the forum, first of all, was awesome, was amazing. I said it was, anybody that asked me, how was it? Said it was well worth the trip. And I probably came the furthest because I'm from Maryland. So. It was an awesome uh, trip. My husband and I had a great time afterwards. We stayed a few extra days, but the uh, quality of the people that were presenting, the speakers, and the quality of the indie authors was very high. And I really am proud to be a part of this group. And, um, and I thank you, uh, Devin, for all your work and Henry for arranging such a great event. It was, it was definitely. You didn't know what um, great company you were in until you got there. Well, <laughs> well, I had a feeling and then I knew for sure. Pardon me? I said that I, I was joking, but that wasn't uh, for sure. Because when you talked to me, you had researched indie books. You found us and you I found did. us because of what we did after the book was published. Um, right. When you compared that part of who we are to everybody else. Um, yeah. You said that helped make your decision. So I was gratified that you got to be in that room yes. and see. And and that was just a um, uh, uh, cliche tip of the iceberg. You know, there's right. there's a there's a hundred more you want to meet that, that, that are amazing. I, I'm sure there are. And I'm looking forward to that. And I just wanted to know, like, what's the process for the sizzle reels? Like, where, when do we see those and how is that handled? Devin? So the footage is with our editor now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping, you know, in the next week or two, uh, they can get through all of it. It was quite a few. <laughs> I think we had probably 30, maybe over 30 videos at, in the end once they go through them all. But we'll get those and we'll they'll be posted. Um, your book, we'll have your book cover kind of as the kind of a title screen fly in as well so but within within two weeks i'm hoping we should have those out to all of you and then do we get a copy for ourselves yeah so if you if you need if you want some the raw footage we can get that to you otherwise the link will be on our youtube and you can use it anywhere anywhere okay. you want okay so we'll start with the cover of your book music the best 
uh, was it uh, unlicensed Roy royalty-free royalty music, music we can buy? <laughs> so, well, some music and then applause, and you'll say thank you for inviting me to talk about blank. Yeah. And then you do your story, and then it ends, and usually there's something at the end for contact information. So yeah, we want you to to share that with meeting planners and the executives who book people and put it on your website and get the raw footage too to put together a sizzle reel one day. Um, Jamie, is your hand politely up there? I have a question as I'm watching a high-speed chase go by. Oh, nice. um, <laughs> nothing like it. Um, were you, I'm sorry, Jean, did you get everything you needed? Okay. Um, I kind of had two. I, you know, we talked about, there's been a lot of conversation about um, podcast guesting, and I want to make sure to point out an opportunity there because we do a lot of work with the hosts and how to nurture the relationships with the guests afterwards, but the same applies with guests. If you were a guest on a show where that person um, could be meaningful to your business, make sure that you have planned out touch points and follow-ups afterwards um, because that's how you really move that relationship along. Oh my goodness. And I didn't even follow your advice from earlier. By the way, I'm Jamie Shibley, <laughs> CEO of the Expressory. I don't have a book yet. I do have a Forbes article that Henry, you know, we, I f have framed now. Thank you so much. Um, but we do um, strategic gifting. So lots of the personal relationship building. My question to you is that um, at the event, we were talking about um, nurturing relationships. Um, you have a requirement when the book goes out that you um, that your authors send out 20 a month to different contacts. And so my table, we got to discussing that even though you send the one book, have a follow-up plan, have it mapped out. So there are touch points happening every six to eight weeks after that. And the question came up and I would like your thoughts on it. Your feedback is, well, my goodness, if I'm sending 20 a week, how am I managing ongoing touch points with all of those people? What is your thought? So what we landed on is, well, of those 20 each month, are there some key ones that would be very valuable to your business? And maybe those are the ones that you are, um, you have multiple touch points going on. So thanks. And you've been helping me with this. I mean, this is almost like a softball question because I've been doing a spreadsheet and planning out eight yeah. different touches for people. And it's, it's not for everybody, but I have a dream prospect list of 25 people I would like to be their client. And um, our mutual mentor says I'm to keep those people on my uh, outreach list until they become a client or they file a restraining order. Uh, now, you know, what do we send them? Um, what's behind Jamie, and, and she was the, the catalyst for uh, this, was um, if I'm doing Forbes articles on people now, and it's an important relationship to me, I'm sending them a framed uh, article. So we're not just, you know, here, suitable for framing, you do it. We actually do the framing, matting, and we send it to them. Um, that's probably $25 in the mail. If these people are oh, more, yeah. you know, well, I mean, yeah, the, the cheap Dutch cheerful way, Jamie. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. And as we're growing, um, we're just seeing that, no, we have to hire you to manage this. It's, um, getting out of control. The Dutch frugalness started, and then everybody's like, uh, so like <laughs> "It's not what, fun after a while." How much did Amy do this for? Right, right. Like, so I was on. You probably sent this to me, but I was so impressed. Um, I was on Drew McClellan's that was uh, podcast. Now my reward was I got a great client just from the podcast appearance. Uh, but he's done something where he took one of my quotes, did some artwork around it, framed it, matted it. Drew didn't do this. You did this, right, Jamie? No, actually, he's not. He His team does it, his agency. He's got his team. He has an yeah. agency, yeah. so he has a team to do it. Uh, most of us don't have an agency behind us to do it. Right. Um, but uh, another person, uh, Susan Beyer, who I've formed a relationship with and we're cross-promoting and things are going great. Through Jamie, I got this uh, thing. It's it's called a Damn It doll, which was funny to me because 
I always say I was five before I knew my name wasn't damn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this doll, especially when you're so frustrated, you, you whack that on the desk and then go take the call. Um, uh, by the way, I had a dog that my kids thought name was damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I'm dumb. Okay. It's an old joke, but a good one. Yeah. So um, the outreaches to the 25 watering holes, which we call the ponds, the people who are putting me on podcasts and in front of their work. Um, I'm saying I'm doing four, but I'm very strategic about a certain group that I want to be in front of. Um, and it's not a coincidence I'm mentioning predictive ROI and uh, AMI all the time. They are the two ponds I have found that I'm going as deep and as fast into as possible right? Um, without being a pest or a nuisance. So I want to be helpful. But I've got 23 others that I'm touching to and managing relationships yeah. and, and are getting things into there. Um, it gets out of control uh, even with a spreadsheet pretty soon okay. unless you can delegate people. So I changed uh, Vicki DeVries' job here and have made her the VP of outreach. So all these Good. physical things going out and taking other duties away from her. Good. Uh, as a as a, a lot of us have been executives here, um, whenever you change somebody's job, um, their first reaction is that they've screwed up. You know, it's uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> like, and explain that. No, it's not that you've screwed up. It's, I can get somebody else to do some of the things you're doing. I can't find anybody else who I trust to handle this. Um, for those of us who played sports, if, if the coach moved you to another position, it usually wasn't because they were demoting you. It's because they had a hole. Uh, yeah. You were the person who could fill it. Um, but uh, this analogy was going really off. So <laughs> I said hole and fill, and I'm going to mention Jamie's the Jamie can fill your holes. That's <laughs> what I meant, but uh, has a business that can help us. And, um, and, and quite frankly, Jamie's a pond for me. I'm a pond for her. Yeah. I need to, I need to find a nice, respectful way to get a list of all the podcasts associated with, with our group. Those are the mm. ones that's going on. Yeah, for sure. Now, so so you're saying that you even have a list and it gets crazy. So the suggestion would be for these authors, yes, keep track of the 20 you're doing. And some of them are going to be more valuable and should um, the nurturing should last longer than others. Yeah. Okay. Now the 20 okay. books a month, like you say, that's over the course of a year, you're sending out 240 books to people who can endorse you, put you on their sure. podcast, write about you, maybe become a client. Okay. Yeah. There should be a, a more finite list of 20 who there we go. you're going to invest more money in. Okay. Yep. I mean, if it's worth planting one seed, are these the people who it's worth planting and right. about eight seeds a year with these people? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, good. Good to know you, that you are as well. Okay. But, but, you know, we don't want you doing hundreds because usually what people do is they'll do hundreds once and then nothing. It's it's more like in radio advertising. It's frequency, not reach. It's how many times. And we used to say seven, then it went up to nine. I'm hearing experts saying 12 now. You have to touch them 12 times and in different ways. And when I say touch, of course, I mean uh, in a respectful way with an immediate outreach. Okay. Um, if I say something like that in print, Devin makes me put an emoji next to it to make sure people know. Henry's joking here, um, but I want you to uh, reach out to them. I see we're, we're at our time limit here. This has been great. Um, we're going to send a, a, a link to this recording. We do these twice a month. We want the community to come together and the benefit is to you to be here, not so much us. It's for you to meet other people and get other ideas and cross promote. Did you see Vivian's so, question though? Don't forget. No, what was she, Vivian's she wants the pod the information. Yeah, you were going to talk about the LinkedIn pod. How do we become a part of that? Or are you going to send out information? Oh, yeah. So, um, I wonder, was Vivian, Vivian, have you received any emails on that from us at all yet? Oh, you weren't at the forum. Okay, so it was announced at the forum. So if anybody uh, 
who wasn't at the forum wants to get the email inviting, we've got about three or four more spots where we can invite people. Um, there's a cost to do it every month, um, people to organize it and do all that. Um, and we're going to commit to doing it for six months. So uh, depending on how much help you want, it's anywhere from 600 to to $1,000 to do this over six months to really okay. focus on the LinkedIn outreach. So we'll make sure you get an invitation. Jamie, sure. thanks for the, for the uh, heads up on that. Nice to meet everybody. Same here. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, Henry, as you, as you tune out, I just yeah. wanted to let you know, I'm following up on what Mason said. I bought at least, I, 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 they're over on my couch, at least five books. Um, I already had uh, Mason's book, but I just want to say how wonderful the experience was. And to let you know that I felt as if I met like these incredible people, that the the content was just so high. Um, and it, it really has me jazzed and working hard. So I will be finishing reading the final draft and sending that back. Um, my hope is to get that done by tomorrow since I had to work this week in addition. But every day, I'm doing something and I appreciate you and Devin all the more. So thank you very much. As they say at Chick-fil-A, our pleasure. <laughs> I haven't been in Chick-fil-A, but I need to go and hear them say that. <laughs> yeah. well, well, no, <laughs> my, my doctor, I said that joke to my doctor and he says, you know, I've never been to Chick-fil-A. And I said, and, and that's why you look like you look and I look like I look. <laughs> By the way, I'm ready to move to to uh, San Diego. Except my friend, my family's on the northeast, so I can't do it. You know. Yeah, you came. You we had Brooklyn in the house. You came the farthest, I think. Yeah, it was wonderful. It really was. Yeah, it's um. Uh, if you, if you want to catch success, hang out with successful authors and experts. They were great. They yeah. really were. Okay, Matthew, I'm excited to talk to you later in the month and. Uh, read your wisdom. Yeah. Uh, I mean, down. nobody gave me a chance to talk today. No, I, I'm kidding. I, I, I wanted to listen today because this was my first time joining. So this was a great experience for me. Monopolizing the listening. It's not yes. A... Isn't that the first lesson? Listen, you <laughs> learn how to listen. Yes, it is. Right? So I will, I, I, I think I'm, I have to just read a couple, uh, read it a couple of times and I'll send it over to you. You'll have it in plenty of time before our meeting. Great. So okay. Also, Thank Mason, you. that wasn't an indie book, so just know that when you read it. Okay, you're, you're on, on mute. mute, Mason. Your laugh line is getting, <laughs> we don't hear you're it. You're on mute. You're on mute. And being on mute is probably the way I should be most of my life. However, <laughs> that notwithstanding, okay, maybe you made an error with the first publisher, but I'm looking forward to the next book, too. That's right. Yeah. I just didn't know the right publisher. Now I right? yeah. But yes. whose fault is that? Mine. <laughs> I own that. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay.